following program is a partnership between Shaw TV, Health Initiative for Men, and the GLBTQ community. Welcome to Outgames TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Dan Doomshaw. Today we join you from Vancouver's wonderful West End at English Bay. The North America Outgames are a week long celebration. And we've got some fabulous coverage of them today. And our highlights include the unstoppable Connie Smudge playing badminton, the dance sport competition, and Outgames gold medalist Philip Rockerby. It's not all about going for the gold, though. The Human Rights Conference has been a major component of these games. Our reporter Larry Colsey takes us there. The people in this room are making history. These two awards are the first ever given out um, at a North America Out Games or any Out Games for that matter. But this is no sports award. These are the awards to acknowledge the fight for equality and human rights. One uh, would be an individual, another would be an organization, which has made the most significant and constructive contribution in moving the LGBTQ agenda forward. The organization award is going to the international courts system. There are 68 cities across North America uh, that bond together for the purposes of charity, fundraising, and education and activism. And their primary fundraiser is drag shows. A very much unsung because drag queens often make people uncomfortable, uh, but we wanted to recognize that they in fact are a huge, perhaps silent part of the community and their, their contributions to the community um, need to be respected and acknowledged. The ICS, the International Court System, decided to focus on gay and lesbian youth and to educate and to raise funds for and to assist with uh, the eradication of, of discrimination for, for youth. Last year, the International Courts System raised over $100,000 for the Matthew Shepard Foundation. A young man who was bullied and harassed and uh, attacked um, in high school and university, and he's turned that around into a foundation. The Individual Human Rights Award also recognizes the need to focus on you. It's going to Jeremy Diaz. We do work to address homophobia and transphobia through workshops and conferences, and we work with about 60,000 youth every year. We've been focused so heavily on rights and marriage, and those aren't really laws or legislation that really impact youth. And I think youth have been you know, severely disenfranchised by our community. I think we need to refocus what we're going to be investing in and what we're going to be doing. For Diaz, this award is just another chance to encourage more people to get involved. Well, you know, I think it's really important that everyone do their best to make a difference. For some people, it's writing a check. For others, it's volunteering. And for other people, it's really you know, starting a program or making a difference in their community. Thanks, Larry. This Out Games Human Rights Conference builds on the progress that was made in the previous three conferences, which happened in Montreal, Calgary, and Copenhagen. And right now we're going back to the Human Rights Conference with reporter Matthew Perry, who speaks with El Farouk Khaki about the particular hurdles faced by the queer Muslim community. El Farouk Khaki boasts an impressive resume. He's a specialist refugee and immigration lawyer and an activist on issues such as gender equality, sexual orientation and progressive Islam. I managed to catch a few words with him before his panel at the Human Rights Conference and began by asking him about Salam, the queer Muslim community, an organization he established. The notion of the organization is to provide a sense of community and, a, and an advocacy and a sense of um, safety for LGBTI Muslims, their families, their partners, their allies. I also asked Farouk about his specific strand of the Human Rights Conference entitled Inshira, an expansion of the heart building for tomorrow. Inshira is the name of a verse in the, uh, of a chapter in the Quran. It's a chapter where God tells the Prophet that his burden will be eased. One could Im imagine that there's a lot of opposition to what you stand for and perhaps to the conclusions that you might be reaching in a forum like this. So tell me, is there also opposition to the discussion taking place? I think so. I mean, Muslims are not a monolith. You know, 1.5 billion Muslims from Albania to Zanzibar. So certainly there'll be people who will be offended or who will be, uh, who will object to our existence, to our conversations and to our conclusions. But diversity has always existed in Islam and we're just trying to find our place in that diversity. What I'm hoping that's going to come out of here is that we're going to empower the people who are here to organize, to come together. Certainly in the larger cities that's a little bit easier, 
but there are also people who are like there's one person here and there's two people there and I, I think also in the days of, um, of the internet and Facebook and, and, and social networking that we are at a nexus point where organizing is so possible in ways that it was never possible before. By creating these little communities it's changing the face, it's changing the tapestry a little bit and enabling us to also become part of the human face of, of Islam, to be part of the human face of the Muslim community. For Out Games TV, this is Matthew Parry with Salam, the queer Muslim community at the Human Rights Conference. Salam Canada has a website you can visit for more information on how to get involved. Now as we've mentioned, the North America Out Games combines human rights, culture and sport for one unforgettable week with lots of variety. I mean, we've got a 6K up Browse Mountain, Texas Hold'em Poker at the casino, and dance sport. Ballroom dancing may sound like the gayest sport ever, but for the same-sex couples that have flown in from all over North America, this is a serious, officially sanctioned competition. Uh, we came for a vacation and uh, for the all game at the same time, yeah. ultimate in same-sex sport because where else do you see two men or two women dancing together yes there are a lot of other sports going on very wonderful but nothing like this it pushes the boundaries of what people know about sports in the gay and lesbian world when we're training which is 95 percent of the time that we're dancing we're very technique focused so it's all about the posture and about getting you know this rib forward while this hip is back and it's very technical when we're on the dance floor we have to have that way in the back of our minds when the judges are judging competitions they're scanning the floor they might look at you for only three seconds because they're trying to divide their time amongst all the different couples. So strategically, you want to wear something that's going to catch the judge's eye. How do you decide what to wear? Uh, I think we decide together, together. Yeah. We decide together. We try to find something you know, similar to yes. the color, you know, to make something very spikely. I don't think the Olympics has dance sport yet, so we're sort of one step ahead of the world in that way. We're not here just individually to get the medals and win and add it to our trophy box. Um, this is a community and we're out here raising awareness about issues that affect the same-sex community. I'm Larry Colsey for Out Games TV. What are you thinking on the doubt? We tried to, to think about sex. Okay, so next time So You Think You Can Dance does a Passe Doble, I want to see them do that reverse roll. Oh, so we still have a chance. <laughs> Let's check out more out game sports with our reporter Darren Storsley. Thanks guys and good evening and welcome to tonight's sportscast for Friday, July 29th, which of course saw day two of track and field at UBC. And much like yesterday, the United States is really cleaning up that field. We're going to start with women's long jump. The gold went to AJ Stakelek of New York. In men's long jump, we, we went to Reggie Sholden of San Francisco, who took gold. Silver was taken by Ben Hall of Indiana. Women's javelin, gold went to Brittany Fries of New York. And women's high jump, the gold went to Anna Jaffe of Boston. However, Vancouver's now picking up the scene. Another gold for that same event for Lara Percy of Vancouver. And two more Vancouver wins for Canada. Men's 1500, gold went to Rick Woods, silver to Mikey Ross. So our, our hometown team is really perking up. Kind of sounds like the war of 1812, doesn't it? Which we won, of course. Now let me tell you that my last two days at track and field have been an amazing experience. I gotta say, these athletes are not only talented and amazing people, they are so kind and compassionate. True meaning of sportsmanship, which I I think could be a lesson to other mainstream sports as well. I'm going to throw now to reporter Connie and see what happened in badminton. Hello, this is your intrepid reporter, the unstoppable Connie Smudge, right here at the fabulous Roundhouse in downtown Vancouver for the amazing badminton tournament. Men's singles already went off without a hitch this morning, except for poor Hao Trong had to retire due to injury, leaving Les Lau winning the singles men's. Well, while you're down there, my darling, here we are in the gymnasium at the Roundhouse, and I'm here with Cindy Simpson. She's the, she's the tournament director. It's been a long two days. Oh, it's longer than two days. Six months of getting ready for this. Congratulations. How did you get involved? 
The executive director asked me about six months ago if I would do this job for them, for badminton. And being a passionate person about badminton, I said, okay. Congratulations. I'm really watching this, and they really are out for blood. It's quite competitive. Badminton is very competitive yeah, yeah, yeah. on the court and off the court. And the velocity of those shuttlecocks, it's amazing. Uh, I forget how many kilometers per hour. It's, it's extremely fast, faster than the tennis ball. It can damage you, too, if it gets anywhere near your eyes. That's why we like it if people wear goggles to protect their eyes or glasses. What about cops? Are they wearing cops as well? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. <laughs> thanks for your time, Cindy. I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks very much. Well, now I have a fabulous group of people to introduce you to. I've been seeing them all over the Out Games, the opening ceremonies, everywhere. And here they are as spectators at the fabulous badminton tournament. I'm sitting here with ha Andrew Hallam. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Glad to be here. I'm ecstatic you're here. We're enjoying it as fast and furious and loud. It is fast and furious and loud. It sounds like my horizontal life. But let's get to the matters at hand, shall we? I was asking our fabulous tournament director, Cindy, if they wore cups. I don't really notice any cup wear. No, we've been looking, but we haven't noticed any. But they are wearing some tight uh, support. <laughs> <laughs> what about tight buttocks? Does that help? It does. <laughs> This brings us to the end of the fabulous badminton tournament. It's still going on behind me. And if you look over to my right, the hot pink shirt, Corinne, she's from Calgary. We were wanting to do an interview with her, but she's going into double time overtime. So in closing, I want to say that I am going out and getting myself involved in badminton. It sounds like a great idea for working out at a good time. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoyed. This is Connie Smudge, signing off. Thanks so much, Connie, for that entertaining look at badminton. And for those of you who are there, don't worry. We did find the five missing birdies later in Connie's hair. Now, I do have some softball results that are just in. And I'm happy to say gold, silver, and bronze all went to hmm, us, Canada. Gold went to our capital city of Ottawa. Calgary Chaos placed uh, second. They got the silver. And bronze went to Vancouver Batman and Robin. I will say that fourth place did go to the other Vancouver team, Vancouver Heat. It's really exciting now for me to be able to profile a local athlete, Ian McLeod, and I caught up with him just a few days before the game started. Let's take a look at this soccer champion. The face behind the powerful legs is Ian McLeod, soccer player, referee and coach, bound for Out Games 2011. I feel great about uh, inviting the world to Vancouver and showing off our beautiful city and uh, you know, meeting uh, different people from uh, different countries um, and uh, di different sports. Soccer requires more than just strength. You also need speed, endurance, and coordination. Just learn how to judge the ball, how it's coming to you, and uh, you know, work on how your body is positioned when the ball comes to you. For Ian, the win in soccer is not as important as the sportsmanship and fun. I think the sportsmanship is more important than winning because, I mean, you know, without the other team you wouldn't be playing a game. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not a good sports and you win, then uh, it's not really a true victory. You know, I, th I think the main victory is participation and sportsmanship and camaraderie. Ian's had many great moments in his soccer career. The most memorable moment uh, for me in soccer uh, would be I was playing for Boston. You just said the B word. Uh, I never said the B word, I never swore. The B word, Boston. Right now, Boston versus Vancouver, final showdown. <laughs> this is it, 1-1, one, one, triple overtime. <laughs> Well, I guess that showed who the real winning city is. But no riots here, just love. For Elk Games TV, I'm Darren Storsley. Now, Ian and his team of New York made it all the way to the gold medal game. So come on out and cheer them tomorrow. Thunderbird Stadium at UBC at 11 a.m. where they will play Boston for the gold medal. Now, possibly the most talked about game in the entire Elk Games week is the Division I final soccer gold game, which is tomorrow at 1 p.m. again at Thunderbird Stadium at UBC between Seattle and Florida. Now remember, your sportscaster, mm, me, Darren, predicted at the beginning of the week it's going to come down to Florida and Seattle, and indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it has. Now who could forget 
our really cute guys from the Seattle team, Evan and Devin, we met a few nights ago. Evan! Hey, Devin! Hey, what? How do you spell your victory? We split our V, we dot our I, we curl our C-T-O-R-Y. Here's what I've done for them, okay? I've changed a Seattle Mariners hat into, ta-da, a Seattle Stonewall hat. Okay, now for these guys, I'm not gonna take this hat off until that game is over. And I believe that Seattle is going to take that. Now, remember the bracelet and the Columbia volleyball team and how well that works. Before you laugh at this, remember that and how it brought the Columbia team to the gold. Now, to respect Vancouver's soc soccer players, uh, the Juicy Fruits have been eliminated now from the soccer tournament. I guess, guys, you just weren't juicy enough. And Vancouver's out for kicks. We'll just say now they're way out for kicks. They were, uh, they lost their game today. But you know what, Vancouver teams, thanks for representing us and your sportsmanship is among the best. So thank you very much. I've had a great time with you guys tonight. And I throw this back to Dan and Rebecca. And we've got more sports action coming your way with track and field star Philip Rockerby. Also entertainment with pianist Sarah Davis Buchner and highlights from the Out Games live showcase at Club 560. Please stay with us. Welcome back. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Dan Doomshaw. We still have lots of exciting show for you, including an interview with Canadian gay icon Carol Pope, listening to the hot club beats of Peter Breeze, and a meeting with Canadian activist and pianist Sarah Davis Buchner. But first, we're off to UBC, where Clayton Timko speaks with Philip Rockerby, who, amazingly enough, managed to win a gold with a broken foot. As the old saying goes, the show must go on. And for runner Philip Rockerby, that saying couldn't be more true. Only weeks leading into the games, he faced a hurdle that looked to throw his career off track. At home, I was just going up a flight of stairs, and part of the stair broke off. So I had sort of a fun turn and landed on the foot improperly and ended up snapping the bone a bit. The preparation involved in track and field is already enormous. But competing with a broken foot requires that much more TLC. Well, mostly it's just been sort of recovery with it, uh, not so much in training, uh, icing it every night, uh, taking a lot of medication just to rebuild the bone structure back. Uh, there's no pain anymore, but it still gets a bit stiff now and then. Philip's quick and miraculous recovery has caught some other athletes off guard. Interesting reaction. Um, I didn't really start telling people until after I finished races, so they're kind of amazed that I was even running to begin with. And how does it feel to be a multiple gold medal winning athlete? It feels like I've sort of accomplished a goal for myself. I think I'm the only person that did sprints today from the whole Vancouver area. So it's kind of nice to, you know, show that Canada has some runners. Despite his epic success, Rockerby plans on taking it one step at a time. To take some time off for a bit and recover my foot fully. Um, I have to start indoor season for track in January in Alberta. So I'll be traveling back and forth in here in Edmonton. At the rate Rockerby's moving, the finish line is never too far away. For Out Games TV, I'm Clayton Timko. Wow, Philip Rockerby. That would be like winning the Tour de France with a flat tire. I think if I had a broken foot, I would be crying. Diva. Hey, loud and proud. And speaking of loud and proud, reporter Jack Fox introduces us to Sarah Davis Buckner. Not only is Sarah Davis Buchner a world-class pianist, she is also a role model for the transgender community, as well as a human rights closing ceremony speaker. I grew up in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, and uh, went to uh, Juilliard School uh, in 1976 uh, and uh, pursued my musical studies there in New York City. In my early 30s, you know, I began to uh, uh, grapple with the issue of having been born as a transgendered woman. Being out and proud as a transgendered woman is something that I have a certain responsibility to, particularly the young people, you know, because uh, I certainly wouldn't want them to grow up in an atmosphere of shame and repression. Um, I thought back to when I was 14 and 15, particularly coming into you know, adolescence, and how much it would have meant to me 
you know, to know people who had undergone that transition. Being alive and successfully carrying on a career is uh, very much a sign of, of, of success and of a role model for the transgendered community. Sarah's journey has come full circle. Being asked to be keynote speaker has left quite an impression on her. My first impression was I'm extremely uh, flattered and touched and very, very honored. And then my second impression was, oh my God, I'm scared out of my mind because it is a time, I think, in Vancouver for all of us in the LGBT community to wear our stripes of pride and to feel you know, good about ourselves. Uh, and to celebrate the things that unite us. And uh, of course, those athletes have put the kind of passion and devotion into their work that I've put into, into mine. So, you know, yeah, I'm flattered. Sarah has a website you can visit if you'd like more information about her or to buy her CDs. We've been broadcasting to you from Elk Games TV, which is a partnership between the LGBTQ community, the Health Initiative for Men, and Shaw TV. With more on this partnership, here's Fred Camperman. HIM is a society that was started in 2008, and its mission is to strengthen the health and well-being of gay men. So it does that really in three ways. One of them is by health promotion. So we have things like a website. We operate a clinic where people can get uh, uh, sexual health information and testing, and also counseling and uh, other mental health services. We also operate by using volunteers in the community and we promote volunteerism in the community and build capacity in the community for people to be involved. We have groups, for instance, that are uh, volunteer-led and volunteer-run and they can range right from things like yoga to writing to voice training to physical fitness exercising and that sort of thing. Well, we're really excited about the idea of having a partnership between the, the GLBT community and Shaw and him to create a program that would showcase what's going on with the uh, North America Out Games, but also uh, give people skills and build capacity in the community so that we have a group of people who, after the games, will be able to continue to produce video material for the community itself. And so uh, organizations like him and other organizations can take advantage of that. And it's so important right now to have video as a component because there's so much going on online and it's so difficult to get it produced. So we'll now have professional video producers who are available to the community, we hope, to help with all kinds of nonprofits and and um, community good. I'm Fred Camperman for Out Games TV at the HIM office on Davy Street. Thanks again to the Health Initiative for Men, Shaw TV, and all of our fellow volunteers for making this show possible. If you've missed any of our coverage of the Out Games, you can check out our YouTube page. And now for a story you don't want to miss, coverage of the live showcase at Club 560. At Club 560, it's an electric night to watch live performances, including Club Kid, now stage performer, Peter Breeze. It's like when I was a little boy and would like sing to Britney Spears in my room. It's just like my own little show, but now people are coming to watch me. Dance is a big part of Peter Breeze's act and he's more than willing to teach you the moves. Put your oh face on, put your oh face on, get your bronzer and your hair gel and your fake Louis Vuitton. <laughs> also performing, Armstrong Jr., a singer-songwriter who's taking Vancouver's LGBT club scene by storm. If I was to direct, describe my music, it would be cheeky, vocal harmony pop. Vocal harmony electro pop. Strongly influenced by singers like Jan Arden, he also knows how to get intimate, a cappella style. To me. Armstrong Jr. <laughs> From vocal harmonies to dope beats, DJ G Love keeps the party going all night. Uh, how do you feel about being here tonight? I feel actually pretty honored uh, to be part of this uh, celebration. You know, to be asked to be do the games, it makes me feel good. Hey, can you let me touch something? <laughs> look, Mom, I'm DJing. <laughs> uh oh, look out, look out. It was a fun night for everybody, including host David C. Jones. Live showcase! Who has a love on for headliner, Carol Pope. Carol Pope. 
was such an icon and so unabashedly lesbian and I'm blown away that tonight I get to say, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Carol Pope. And we're saving Carol for the closing ceremony Saturday, a show you don't want to miss. In Vancouver, I'm Colin Winter for Out Games TV. See you Saturday. Wow, that was some showcase. And Carol Pope will be performing at the closing ceremonies, which are on tomorrow. Yes, Saturday, July 30th. There are still tickets available. We are going to be there taping. So come down and say hi. As if you didn't need enough of a reason, Connie Smudge, our co-host, is also going to be there. Ace of Base, Dragonette. It's going to be nonstop fun starting at 11 o'clock. And at 3 p.m. will be the Diversity Flash Mob. You should really not miss that. And 5.45, the medal ceremonies. Cheer some people on. It's a fully licensed event and concert, and it goes all the way till 10. So get your butt down there and say hi. We've been broadcasting here from Vancouver's beautiful West End at English Bay. I'm Dan Doomshaw. And I'm Rebecca Wyman. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you at the closing ceremonies.